Hey, hail and well met. Welcome to the pre-game hangout uh, for the Westgate Regulars campaign. Uh, some of us are here. Some of us will be more here later. But uh, we have split the party, and only half of the party is present in this particular session. And I am not running it. Aaron is running it. Oh, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> is anyway, this the first... Um, Oh no, Aaron ran the charity game on our stream once upon a time. So this will be her right. second time running something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, since I'm going to start out playing Sebastian, who is a uh, artificer, I thought I would wear my Mass Effect hoodie and my Mass Effect Omni tool um, because, you know, well, that's that's what you are in that game. So <laughs> hopefully the uh, the brightness won't be distracting to anybody. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, man. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be fun. And I have um, brought the guest cameo of the Derpy Cat. Um, Ooh. Right now you're looking at her shoulder. Let's see if I can get her. Come here, Smoka. Come here, come here, Smoke. Her name's Smoke. What is that, like, children's that's music? My... <laughs> that's my um phone that I'm... We'll actually deal with now here. Oh, okay. I thought that was like some sort of cat whisperer trick. Like you've got like this little noisemaker in your <laughs> sleeve, and every time you like reach for a cat, it makes like the ice cream truck sound. <laughs> no, no, that 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 was one of the default ringtones on my phone, and I didn't feel like changing it. Um, I know what that is, and it is spam. Oh, the spam calls are the worst. All right. Come here, Schmuck. Come, come so, look for the camera. Oh, oh, oh what a pretty gosh. cat! Yeah, they look like if a little caramel. If I um, pick her up, she'll leave. But maybe that's what I need. She's the cord chewing cat, so she's not allowed to be in here without being supervised. <laughs> oh, so I can't okay. have her during the game. All right, come here, Schmuck. Oh, you are heavy. You are fifteen pounds. Oh, Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> a little bit yeah. of a chunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was. A, yeah, she looked a lot tinier in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had somebody like, they're like, oh, such a cute little cat and two cords. No, and I'm like, oh, you haven't seen her. You need scale. <laughs> I guess she's sleepy. She's not trying to escape immediately. Nice. Oh, there she goes. All right, go and smoke. Out you go. Mm. Bye bye. So I'm trying to recall if I've ever been a player on our stream before. I know that um, there have been yeah. times that I didn't DM. Yeah. But was I actually a player or was I just sitting out? No, you played Starshin during uh, Nate Crowder's uh, special. Ah, that's right. That's right. And, that did uh, happen. And and um, Mr. Nor as well. Yeah. Mm, yeah. My fun. one and only. Fucking cocksucker. <laughs> Steven, <laughs> Steven, you're not <laughs> muted. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I think you might have heard that. <laughs> we definitely did hear that, Steven. Yeah. Sturge, what are you doing there? I love Discord. I love, oh, I love Discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, welcome. <laughs> welcome. That needs to hey. be like a new bingo square. <laughs> it wasn't during the stream, so that wasn't our one for the stream. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steven is solving some tech issues right now, so that's why you can hear that sort of emotion coming from him. <laughs> Urge hot mic moment. Hot mic, yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm also wearing Mine. a t-shirt, but it has nothing to do with Stong or a game. Do you know what this is? You definitely know what this is. I know what that is. But it's like all 150 of the Pokemon uh -huh. making up the Pokeball. <laughs> Gotta catch them all. Yep. Hello. Welcome. Hey, Aaron. Welcome. You missed uh, Steven's hot mic moment. That was real funny. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it was like he definitely said the F bomb and then he said, uh, well, Rooster we we vacuum. There we go. <laughs> Just a variation on Rooster vacuumer. Quick, Steven, call someone a stupid son of a bitch. Do it. <laughs> All right. Ah, oh, boy. 
So Rhiannon, what was it like getting a break for, uh, what was it like two weeks? What'd you do? What'd you do on those Wednesdays? I saw you were in here in the stream a couple of times, but. Yes. Um, I think a couple of them. Um, so I have a story in an anthology that we're not cleared yet to say um, that we're in it uh, because they're going to release the TOC in a big thing. Um, so in a uh, mysterious anthology, and I was Ooh. doing um, revisions. So if had I not been playing this week, I would have been doing copy edits because <laughs> their copy editor is apparently quite fast because I got the revisions in and then they came right back <laughs> with my copy edits. So, and then um, I was, I do jigsaw puzzles is my, um, one of my things. So I was like jigsaw puzzling while um, chatting and watching the stream. Nice. Cat. Uh, yeah, smoke. She's just yelling at me. Okay, yeah, I just remembered we do have a number of changes to the stream this week. Uh, number one is like if you're looking for the idle champions code and you type in um, the command into chat, it'll actually go into like a uh, private DM instead of into the chat itself. Oh. At first, I thought it wasn't working. <laughs> and I was like, why is it not working? <laughs> uh, we also have two giveaways going on today for those who are here early. Uh, right over there, you can see the commands for them. One is we're giving away uh, one dice tray and one dice set yet again from the lovely, generous people at phoenixdice.com. So you could use exclamation mark ticket to enter that. And if you win, then you get to select any dice set of your choice from the website. Um, nice. And and then we're also giving away two copies of uh, Gwen Garfunkel, Garfinkel's book, Can't Find My Way Home which Steven will tell you more about later. I just put the Omni tool back on in case people want to check it out. <laughs> it is pretty cool. It has the blade too. I'm, I'm surprised how much like it evokes the sort of video game graphics. Yeah, that's yep. awesome. And it, it lights up with the little, um, little, little switch. Nice, nice, nice. It's very cool. Do you wear that on date nights? Yeah, absolutely. Keep your wife safe in the dark alleys. <laughs> That's right. People don't. So, well, people didn't approach me before because I'm too tall. Uh, but when they yeah. see that I have this big glowing orange thing on my hand, they're like, "Oh shit, okay." <laughs> I don't know what that guy's got going on, but I don't want any part of it. Yeah, somewhere not in this house, I might have a, a little stuffed Mabari, um, mm. which is very cute and then it's got a little mabari crunch which i think is the best best part what um, is a mabari crunch hmm? well it's, it's they're little doggy biscuits that you um serve it in the game yeah um but you so can the give little him doggy plush. biscuits and then he loves you more except oh. that he already loves you max so it doesn't... <laughs> he's got a little <laughs> okay. little little plastic um dog bone shaped kind of thing that says crunch on it mm -hmm. um so it's it's pretty cute Ah, adorable. <laughs> I do I do love those like cozy like animal raising games. Um I think like the Humble Bundle just gave me a game called like Calico Cats or something where I'm like a lady operating a cat sanctuary and like you start off with just like regular cats and then eventually it turns into like magical cats or something. Hmm. Neat. I think I've seen like that board game but I don't know about the, the video game. And it's probably something different, just with a similar sort of name scheme. Mm. I did just play that board game also. If it's the a AEG one, it's pretty fun. I, I haven't actually played it. I um I don't own board games. I'm friends with people who have board games. So um, it hasn't come up when I've been over at their places. They're all, they want to play terraforming Mars and stuff. Oh, I love Terraforming Mars. You know, I will play Terraforming Mars like every week, as I did for a year during the pandemic, and just love it and want more. Um, real quick for the people that are asking about the uh, giveaways. So the books are US only, um, but the, the dice is anywhere in the world. Rhiannon? I'm, I'm, yes. 
back to terraforming Mars. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not a super terraforming Mars kind of gal, I'm sad to say. Oh, okay. Well, hmm. the next time we all hang out and get together and want to play a board game, like, what would be your board game of choice? Um, my go-to for a long time was Carcassonne because I played it enough to um, have some semblance of strategy. That's a good one. Um, I enjoy Wingspan, though I've yet to win it, because I don't have strategy yet. It's just fun. Yeah, Wingspan's uh, lovely. I'm trying to think. They sort of... I just show up, and there's a board game in front of me, and I get taught it, and then... So it goes in one ear and out the other a little bit. Um, I'm trying to think. I we, my um, sister and my mother have birthdays in the same month, so my sister and her partner were over this other weekend, and um, we were playing a blast from the past because we excavated it from the back of the parents' bookcase. Um, Quiddler, which is like <laughs> Jin Rami with um, letters to make words. Oh. Um. So that it was. It, it was. Um. It was pretty fun. Like. I keep my voice down, but um, my parents took a little bit to sort of like get in the, the zone with the rules, but that's how my parents are. They're just outside your bedroom, like <laughs> listening into your conversation. No, no, they're downstairs watching TV, but it's never, it's never good to, to take things for granted. I they gather as a little child. They need to know you're shit about their Quiddler skills. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would only be fair because as a little child in our old house where I lived until I was five, um, Apparently, they discovered that if they didn't want me to know something, they had to never speak of it within the house. Like, they didn't catch me listening at doors or anything, but they would say something, like, in their bedroom or something like that when I was supposedly in bed asleep, and then I would know it. So, <laughs> and I don't remember. I was I was four or five, so I don't know what I was doing. I do remember that there was a way that you could look downstairs if you like if i took my stool from the bathroom and like step stool and like looked over the the banister so <laughs> i must have been doing listening at their door so uh one of our viewers mentioned that carcassonne induces evil so that like i don't know i think my first reaction is like i, I haven't encountered that myself but it makes me think about like monopoly like there's certain mm -hmm. games mm -hmm. that just break friendships like mm -hmm. i refuse to play monopoly i would I would rather that not play That is the worst diplomacy. fucking game in the universe. It is. <laughs> Bar none. Bar, yes. Bar none. Welcome to the conversation. <laughs> Mic drop. I, what breaks through Aaron's anxiety? Shit talking Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> worst fucking game. It, what it is, is it teaches you about the slow, un fundamental grind of failing at capitalism. Yep. Why? Yes. yes. This is the first time I ever, like flipped out at a game on vacation with my family like i could not be a good sport trying to teach my son how to play monopoly and 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 <laughs> my husband was just like mama's not allowed to play this game I'm like, <laughs> i like that rule it's the worst game <laughs> now i'm gonna eat <laughs> my parents my parents absolutely refused to play monopoly with my wife because the one time that we did play, she hid money under the table to elicit sympathy from what? people. What? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that not cheating? Is that not technically cheating? I guess I guess it's not no. against the rules. <laughs> it's not against <laughs> the rules. to make a rule about that. So, you know, besides Monopoly, like what other games have caused problems for you in the past? Do you have any other games that have like made your friendships go into clear? Because I have. Have you played Diplomacy? Yeah, diplomacy is usually the go-to. Yes, it is. Long. I owned a copy of Diplomacy, and I read the rules, and it was like, "Do all of these things. That should take about thirty minutes. Then you can start the game." And I was like, "This is never happening." Yeah, <laughs> every game of Diplomacy is like seven to eight hours long of like lying and backstabbing and like terrible feelings. And it's really hard to be eliminated as a player. Most people just like say they want to be eliminated and like leave, but technically you're not allowed to do that <laughs> because it would really affect the board. I'm trying to think. I mean, the worst childhood game that I remember was just 
boring, like aggressively boring. Because it was this, I don't even remember the name of it, but there were two sides to the board and there were different games. And I think it was one of those where it was like, we're disguising learning um, oh. that kids never fall for. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it, it was about uh, Egyptians building the pyramids. And so there was this path through a pyramid and you were doing the different stages of the blocks and the golden capstone and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I don't know if they didn't play test it enough where the rules were badly written, but we couldn't find the win condition. Huh. <laughs> so you just sort of kept circling the path until you got wow. done. And so my parents interpreted <laughs> this as it was some newfangled game where wow. no one would be sad because nobody won. And I'm oh like, my God. no, it's just badly designed. <laughs> like they didn't I... think through their victory condition. Did you ever get, when I was a kid, my mother also really hated competitive games because there's three of us and I'm older than the next sister by two years and she's older than the next by two years. So I had an advantage already um, and I am a little bit competitive. So she was just like, no. <laughs> and then whatever I had, my dad, my the, one of the reasons I grew to hate Monopoly and the I never had a chance to love Monopoly is that my dad was ruthless. And when you're laughing at bankrupting a 12, a 10 year old, um, You've already lost the high road. Let's just say that. Uh, but my mom really liked, there, there weren't a lot of like actual cooperative games. Like now we play cooperative games with my family all the time. But my mother gave us things like the ungame. Have you ever had to play the ungame? No, never heard of it. The, uh, the ungame, as far as I can tell, is really meant for like group therapy or something because you draw a card and it's like, tell about a time you felt sad. Oh. Uh, like it it's just like it's it's like playing the worst game of truth or dare there's no dares and all the truths are boring except that there's, <laughs> in there, there's some like wild cards like make up your own question so what ended up happening uh, was i got sent to a girl scout thing with this not game i mean it literally says the ungame it's not a game um and we basically flipped through cards so we got the wild card and went who do you like and that was it. That's the entire like value out of the ungame Love that it. I ever got. But yes, it was basically structured to like make children talk about their feelings or something. Oh, I know a game that like oh, parents man. it I mean my parents split up because they were already very badly suited for each other, but they had a game called Scruples where like you asked like will you would you do this thing and then like you say what you'd do at, at, like in this in this sort of moral quandary thing and then <laughs> Uh, people argue about whether or not you'd do it. And they went to a party right. and played this game, brought this game. I'll give an example. The one that made my parents, if it didn't make them divorce, it definitely was a a, a, a thing on the scale, was uh, would you carry, uh, a, would you be a surrogate for an infertile couple? And my mother said, yes, she would. She would love to help someone like that. And my father called her out and said, no way, you hated being pregnant. You were miserable the whole time. And in front of everybody made up this story about how my, which my mother was like, this is not true. And so they got into a fight at a party about whether or not my mother would imaginary, carry some imaginary couple's baby. Wow. Out yeah, of the goodness wow. of her heart. Wow. And so my mother immediately like, like, Planned a garage sale and got rid of that game. Planned a garage sale <laughs> immediately <laughs> to get rid of this game. I mean, that's almost like a cursed garage sale. Just piles of all these like really cursed games <laughs> um, that cause like people to lose friendships and family. And you just sell them all to unsuspecting families. Uh, so I have to actually go to the viewer questions because we are running out of time. Or no, like viewer comments. And there's some really good ones in here. So uh, somebody brought up, so MAB says uh, Risk is another game that causes like problems among friends and family. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Cassius brought up Munchkin, which I absolutely have experienced. Um, yep. Yep. I may or may not have lost a girlfriend in the past because of Munchkin, <laughs> but hey, I won, so. Um, and then- <laughs> Worth it, worth it, question mark? I don't know. Um, and then Eric brings up Talisman. Oh, interesting. Talisman. Uh, it's it's the game that you want to play, and then you're playing it, and you're like, why did we decide to play this game? Oh, my God. It's going on forever. Yeah. Oh, it does last a long time. I absolutely, <laughs> yes, agree. I thought you meant it brought conflict, like, you know, backstab or something. And I was like, that's not it, my experience. I, it, I mean, 
yes, I have been in numerous talisman games where people just saved everything they could that was a screw you um, effect for somebody who was getting near the end. And then they were just like, nope, boom, boom, boom. And just, we're going to make the game go on another hour or two. Let's yep. do this. Yep. I think like my specific yeah. situation was like the girl I was dating at the time was about to win. And then I had the card to stop her. And then she was like, you let me win. You let me win or we're done. And I looked her <laughs> in the eyes. I looked at the card. I looked at my other friends. I looked her in the eyes and I played the card. <laughs> so, um, okay. A Grey Dawn suggests Settlers of Catan as, a, as another one. Uh, mm. Definitely the trading and the road blocking can cause like a lot of problems among friends. Like, have you never gotten to that situation where it's like almost the end of the game and like two people are, you know, pitting it out to win and you just give one sided trades to just let one of them win? Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe just. That's when I person. sneak in and buy all the development cards and go, oh, surprise, I won. Yeah, just drop all those VPs. Um, okay, Cassius asks us, oh, wow, what kind of board game would we be if we were a board game? And Eric suggested Fiasco. <laughs> so there is a dungeon scrawlers board game it has nothing to do with us it's just a, a, a game that happens to be named the same as our as our From group Wiz here kids. From yes, Wiz kids. so like we that's would love the... to record playing this but you have to be in the same room we've realized right. we can't do this over zoom so yeah watch right in the future that's the literal answer we would be that game but um yeah i think uh, i think fiasco is my my contention hmm. i feel like it'd be easier to pick a game per character oh mm -hmm. yeah then interesting what game is artemisia well so i always say she isn't an austin novel because she actually has a lot of sex as opposed to just like meaningful glances and like wrist touches um, but there is that uh, Jane Austen card game where oh, yeah! you know, her husband and marrying yeah. Mr. Darcy. Is that that's called? the one. That's a great that one. Game. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I and think it's they a great have game, a, so. they have like a zombie expansion for that game too. They have a couple of expansions. Yep. But one of them is a zombie one. I think well, they, they, my brother-in-law has zombies and has a is there Jane Eyre expansion. Yeah. Or, no, something. I think so. That Wuthering Heights? Game. I, I like don't that know. one. All right. Different. I don't know if there's not. I would buy that one. I need to run <laughs> yeah. inside and grab some stuff. So, what form game, game would Stong be? be? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Echo, echo, echo. Um, yeah, I think she got her mic muted. That's Aaron's. Thing. Oh, I see. Ooh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, so we are at six twenty-three, and we still have oh, like I see. three I see regulars to go through. It's fine. I'll it's type fine. it into chat during the break because we, we do go. have to run the recap, and then we need to run a quick ad break. And um, you know, I just wanted to highlight some quick viewer answers before we go. So, like Sword Razor said, trouble as a game that uh, <laughs> that gives trouble to friends and family. And um, MEB says every. Anyone ever play Eldritch Horror? Yes. But I, I love that game. I have not played Eldritch Horror. I think it would be fun, though. Oh, Eric, I have the newest edition. We could get together and play it sometime. Awesome. All right, see you in a bit. So, they thought it was a good idea to split the party. I mean, I'm not sure that was the best of choices, but I can understand the drive, especially given that Cecilia really didn't want to go to Rashomon, so more power to her, really. So, as we know, Cecilia, Rogar, and Kalith had stayed behind along with Sarshin to uh, try to find some information that might be able to help Cecilia find an alternative patron that wouldn't have to be, you know, the heart of the piercing's brother who used to be Sarshan's patron, who now views him as prey for betraying him. Not not the best option when you're dating said prey. You didn't have me recapping last time, so, well, we can gloss over it a little bit. They got into a strange crypt with uh, in the basement of Briar House, which uh, is connected to the uh, Vamos family crypts now, of all, well, it makes sense. It's not of all places, given that Briar House is now sitting where House Vamos used to be. Well... 
They fought a gelatinous cube, raised some skeletons that were destroyed by said gelatinous cube, and fought an animated suit of armor that contained the spirit of a wolf for some reason. But they did find a library, and Cecilia was able to recover one of her powers, at least, which was uh, Eldritch Blast, which she used to blow up a bookshelf. Much to Kaelith's uh, shock and horror. Searching the library at least turned up some information and options for Cecilia to look into. Uh, for instance, uh, the death god Jurgal, or Jurgal. There's also the Unseelie Court. Uh, there was Melchizedek, the Branded King, I think he's called, which sounds like a terrible option given that he's very anti-elf and Cecilia is kind of half elven a little bit. Further in, they found a bedroom that contained a floating skull. Turns out, Veratrix Vamos apparently had made a pact with some kind of entity herself some time ago and had been turned into this floaty skull thing at some point. That was left unclear. And while their initial visit did not turn up anything noteworthy with her, uh, after they found out that she'd made a pact, they went back down, went to talk to her, and found out that uh, it might be Jurgal? Jurgal? They, they don't know. She doesn't know. Though apparently she had a bit of a roll in the hay in some darkened space with whoever it was. I mean, I swear, giving warlocks a bad name, not every warlock does that. Jeez. Not that I would know. I'm not a warlock. But I would assume. But I digress. They did manage to get some information out of her, which was at least moderately helpful. At least if they decide to try to summon Jurgle, which uh, they might. Cecilia seemed iffy on it. Uh, gods of death and all that. But at least from what they learned from Veratrix, he does seem to be fairly hands-off and might be amenable to helping them stop the Golden Raven, which is also kind of a big deal. Well, debates and decisions wait. And I suppose we'll have to wait to find out what Cecilia decides to do because, uh, well, it's time to check in on everybody else, isn't it? I just know one thing as far as choosing a patron goes, and that is that uh, Lilton's a bad choice. Don't do Lilton. Please don't do Lilton. Seriously.